are speaking with Dr. Mario Raviglione from WHO. Dr. Raviglione, can you give us a quick global snapshot of where we stand with TB? Uh, we just released uh, a month ago the new Global Tuberculosis Report 2015 that summarizes the statistics. So we have both good news and sober news. The good news is that we achieved, the world achieved, the Millennium Development Goal that was uh, uh, related to TB, that of reversing the epidemic. So the epidemic is now going down, although it's going down very slowly. And importantly though, we cut uh, the number of deaths by 50%, in fact is the death rates by 50% since 1990, which was another international target. So that is good, and we, in, in, in the end the world saves something in the, range of 40, in the range of 43 human lives. At the same time, and this is the sobering news, TB is now basically ranking alongside HIV as the number one killer with basically 1.5 million people dying of TB every year, including 400,000 that are uh, death related to TB in people living with uh, HIV. And that means 4,400 every day. And this is still something that uh, is not being addressed completely and that's why we are uh, now saying we need to invest much more in TB as it has been the case for HIV where the death have come down much more quickly and we are sure that with TB we can do the same. But it's a matter of investment of both domestic and uh, 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 international aid type of funds. Mm -hmm. And what are you seeing in terms of MDR-TB in the former USSR nations? Uh, MDR-TB is a scaring story because once a person has multi-drug resistant tuberculosis then the chances of cure re basically get from, from some 90% or so in drug susceptible to be down to 50-60%. And uh, not only, but this is a, a very a toxic regimen compared to the one we use for normal tuberculosis. Uh, not only, but it's a very expensive one and uh, it's difficult sometimes to administer or even to procure the drugs. So we have to do everything possible to prevent it. In the, in the former uh, Soviet Union where the case is now out of control in the sense, uh, in the sense that there are at least in some parts of that sub-region, one third of cases that have multidrug resistant TB is where then the care part comes in and we have to really now at that point uh, uh, invest as much as possible in as early diagnosis as possible. We have molecular tests now that can allow us to detect multidrug resistant TB on day one and then provide the proper treatment which is different, much longer than the one for drug susceptible TB. And the same has to be done all over the world because there are multidrug resistant TB cases all over the world. Mm -hmm. And which nation currently has the highest incidence of MDR-TB? Uh, this is the, in the former Soviet countries mm -hmm. uh, where we have, uh, uh, as I said, up to one third of new cases that are multidrug resistant from the start. Mm -hmm. However, in absolute terms, when you compare then these percentages with the absolute number of cases, then you find that the number uh, one or two countries are India and China and uh, then we have Russia, we have Pakistan and uh, Ukraine. These are the five countries that have nearly, nearly two-thirds of the cases in the world. Mm -hmm. And why do you think ending TB by 2035 is a realistic goal? Alright, so the, the, the basis for saying that comes from the uh, review of the empirical uh, data that we have. We know that uh, after the war, in uh, the Second World War, in the, in the 1950s and early 60s, when Europe had uh, universal access to, uh, to, to diagnostics and the drugs that were available at the time, when there were schemes of social protection that didn't impoverish people during the treatment, uh, well, we saw at the time a decline of the incidence of tuberculosis that was in the range of 10% per year. So we are now claiming that 70 years later, you know, more than half a century, 70, 80 years later, the same may happen if, uh, especially the BRICS for instance, that have the majority of cases of TB, if they really invest what needs to be invested in, in TB, we, we think that that could also happen in these growing economies and in other middle income countries that have a lot of tuberculosis. So reaching 10% per year in 2025 is what is foreseen in our projection and that is doable. And then after 2025, so we have about 10 years to reach that level, but after that we will need new tools, otherwise we are not going to get the curve down further. And to reach this level of ending the epidemic by 2030 or 2035, depending on the indicators we use, then we will need new tools. We need a point of care diagnostic, we need shorter and better regimens 
for both drug resistant and, uh, multi, uh, and susceptible TB, as well as for latent infection. And we will need eventually a vaccine, because that would probably be the final solution for tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about funding. What is the biggest threat or challenge to full funding for uh, eliminating TB? So at the moment we have a gap that is estimated uh, uh, at, uh, in the range of 1.4 billion dollars per year mm -hmm. that has to be filled, we think, by both domestic and international aid resources. Domestic resources is because tuberculosis, contrary to HIV and malaria, does not only affect the low-income countries, it affects the middle-income countries, the BRICS for instance. And that's where we believe that there is a role to be played by the BRICS themselves in funding more their own national programs. Because if they do and the, uh, the results are there, then we can really see the incidence going down. Uh, at the same time, we need international aid for the low-income countries or for those countries that are not yet capable of fully domestically, you know, in a way, fund uh, uh, the fight against tuberculosis. And so we are advocating for filling this gap with both, uh, uh, as I say, domestic and international. Uh, the other important point to, to, to keep in mind is that the new uh, global investment plan for tuberculosis now will call for much, a much higher level of money needed. We were saying that we need 8 billion this year, of which 1.4 is the gap. Next year, this will become 11 billion because of the ambitions and the uh, uh, much uh, more, in a way, uh, strongly ambitious target that we have set. So that will require more investment, and so definitely is an issue of investment. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much.